Okay, so now we're going to look at the thoracic limb of the goat. We're going to move this cutaneous trunchi muscle out of the way so we can first review the extrinsic muscles. We see the latissimus dorsi, which is going to pull the limb caudally. We see the trapezius muscle up in here, which is going to pull the limb up and against the body. We have the omotransversarius that's going to pull the scapula forward, except when the limb is planted, then it's going to turn the head and neck or flex the neck if we do it bilaterally. Our brachiocephalic, which has the same kind of effect in that it advances the limb when the limb is not weight-bearing, but when the limb is weight-bearing, it's going to turn the head and neck, or if it's done bilaterally, it's going to flex the head and neck. Okay? So here, this little thin muscle here actually is mostly on the medial side, and that is going to be our, our tensor fascia anabrachii. We can see here the two portions of the deltoideus muscle. We have our long head of the triceps, the lateral head of the triceps, and then we can work on down these muscles here. I'm going to show you an isolated limb in just a second, but let's go ahead and look at them here too. So our extensors of the carpus and digit ex include the extensor carpi radialis muscle here. We have then the common digital extensor, which actually has two portions. Sometimes the one that goes to the medial digit is referred to as the medial digital extensor or the medial head of the common digital extensor. Then we have the one that goes commonly to both digit. I'll show you that better on the isolated limb. Our lateral digital extensor which just goes to the lateral digit, the ulnaris lateralis, and then way over here is going to be the flexor carpi ulnaris. Okay, now let's go to the isolated limb. So this is the limb from the other side. So we do have some stumps here. We still have a portion of our deep pectoralis muscle here. We have rhomboideus muscle attaching here, serratus ventralis muscle attaching in here, and we have latissimus dorsi muscle here, okay, latissimus dorsi. So starting here at the shoulder, this one above the spine of the scapula is going to be the supraspinatus sitting in the supraspinous fossa. It's coming over attaching to the greater and lesser tubercle, so that's going to be an extensor of the shoulder. Sitting in the infraspinous fossa is the infraspinatus muscle, and much of that is covered by the deltoideus. Okay, so we have the acromial head of the deltoideus that attaches to the acromion, the spinous head that attaches via this aponeurosis to the spine. Okay, both of these are going to be flexors of the shoulder because here's our point of rotation and so they're going to cause flexion. We transected that here and so we can better see beneath it there's our tendon of the infraspinatus muscle and then Caudal to that is the very small teres minor, another one of our shoulder flexors. Now we're going to go ahead and transect that infraspinatus muscle. We can see here the very nice infraspinous versa. Okay. While we are up here at the infraspinous bursa, I just want to comment that 
Remember that bursa is sitting over the caudal part of the greater tubercle here. And if the animal gets hit here or some other trauma to inflame that bursa, because of the pain from that, the animal is going to abduct the limb to take the pressure off that tendon going over that bursa. Okay, so they'll stand with their limb a little bit abducted out. Okay, so our deltoideus, our teres minor, and over here our teres major, these are going to be our major flexors of the shoulder. Now while we're on this side, we might as well look here at the subscapularis muscle. We see it being innervated by the subscapular nerves. And then here, we can see this whole muscle here coming all the way around is going to be the supraspinatus muscle. And here going between it and the subscapularis, just as we saw in the dog and in the horse and in our other animals, is the suprascapular nerve. So the suprascapular nerve is going to course around to innervate supraspinatus and the infraspinatus muscle. Here we have the thoracodorsal nerve. And then we've got this nerve here that is diving between the subscapularis and the teres major. And it's going to be the one coming around and penetrating in to the deltoideus muscle right here. And that's going to be the axillary nerve. So the axillary nerve gets the deltoideus, the teres major, and the teres minor to, for the flexors of the shoulder. So that's axillary nerve. And while we're here in the axilla, we can see here nicely the axillary lymph node. Okay, we're going to come back to the vessels in a minute. Here we've got a great big nerve diving between the long head and the medial head of the triceps brachii muscle. This is going to be the radial nerve. It's going to innervate these caudal muscles including the tensor fascia antibrachii. And we see that we've here we've got the long head once again and the lateral head of the triceps brachii. We've transected that lateral head and we can see here the radial nerve giving branches off into it. Then the radial nerve comes on down. Here we have cut off the superficial branch, which is going to be cutaneous innervation primarily, all the way down to the more dorsal digits. And then the deep branch here, which is diving in, and it's going to do these extensors of the carpus and digit. Okay, so that's the radial nerve. And it's going to do extensors of the elbow as well as extensors of the carpus and the digit. Okay, coming back over here. So this nerve here going caudally to the elbow, it's going to be the ulnar nerve. We can see the ulnar nerve continuing down the limb here. It's going to innervate these caudalmost muscles of the antebrachium. And then it's going to divide into a palmar branch which continues in the carpal canal and a dorsal branch. The dorsal branch will come around here dorsally, will do cutaneous innervation, it'll get that abaxial dorsal surface of the fourth digit. The palmar branch will come on down and it'll get the abaxial palmar surface of the fourth digit. Okay. Then this nerve here is actually two nerves. We've got a branch here coming off that is the proximal muscular branch of the musculocutaneous. It's going to come in here and innervate the corticobrachialis muscle and then it will, you can see here it's coming underneath that 
to innervate the biceps brachii. Okay. As it courses through here, it's actually coursing with the median nerve. So this here is both the musculocutaneous and the median nerve. Here we have our distal branch or our terminal portion of the musculocutaneous. It's going to dive deep to the biceps brachii. Come over here, get the brachialis muscle. Where is that brachialis muscle? Here it is in the brachial groove. We can find it e more easily deep to the lateral head of the triceps brachii. So there's the brachialis. And it also is going to give off over here a cutaneous branch which is going to come around and do the more medial aspect of the anabrachium. So that's musculocutaneous. At this point here, it just continues as the median nerve. And we'll see the median nerve is going to continue with the main vessel here on down. It's going to do the palmar surface palmar abaxial surface of 3 and 4 and the palmar abaxial surface of 3 and 4. Okay. Now if we come down here to the digits, remember when we have a reduction of digits we lose first the first one and then the fifth one and then back to the second one and so that these two-toed ungulates are standing on their third and fourth digit. So we have digit three and digit four here. Okay. And then of the horse, because we went in, out, in, out, the horse is standing on its third digit. So as you see down here, I have removed one of the dew claws. And you can see that there aren't any phalanges within that. It's just fat. Okay. On occasion, in large ruminants, you may find a little bit of a phalanx in there. But in general, these guys aren't going to have anything but fat in there. Okay? So this would be the second and fifth digit. And so the radial nerve, superficial branch, is going to give off the axial surface of 3 and 4 and the abaxial surface of 3 on the dorsal aspect. Okay? Let's see. Okay, so now let's look at these muscles of the anabrachium. We have this big guy here that continues, comes all the way down to the metacarpal tuberosity. That's going to be the extensor carpi radialis. We see this muscle here that's going obliquely across its surface here. Okay. Sometimes this is referred to as the abductor pollicis longus, but because these guys have no pollicis or thumb, and it primarily acts to extend the carpus, we're going to call this the extensor carpi obliquus muscle. Okay. Caudal to that. We have the common digital extensor. As I said, sometimes this more medial portion is referred to as the medial digital extensor because its tendon comes all the way down here to the medial digit. It's going to basically end at the, most of it at the second phalanx of the third digit. But then there is a small part that goes all the way down to the distal phalanx. Then we've got the common digital extensor or the lateral head of the common digital extensor. And we can see that this tendon is going to come all the way down and it's going to divide and go to both digits. It's going to go all the way down to that extensor process on the third phalanx. Okay. Then we have the lateral digital extensor coming down here going to the lateral digit, very similar to the one that just comes to the medial digit. Primarily it's attaching to the second phalanx, but it does have a small part that comes down to the third phalanx. Here we have our ulnaris lateralis. It's the guy that doesn't play fair because even though it's innervated 
like the rest of these extensors it's actually a flexor it attaches to the accessory carpal bone but then it also has a long tendon here that's going to go all the way down to the lateral aspect of the cannon bone or the fourth metacarpal bone side of the fused third and fourth metacarpal bones okay so that's the ulnaris lateralis then over here we have our flexor carpi ulnaris just as in other species it has a ulnar head and a humeral head okay this guy is also coming down to attach to the accessory carpal bone we see here a muscle that has the same action as the flexor carpi ulnaris but it's closer to the radius so it's the flexor carpi radialis so both of these just flex the carpus deep to these now we're going to have our superficial digital flexor and our deep digital flexor now in these ruminants we have a funny thing that happens here so we've got a superficial and a deep head to the superficial digital flexor this deep head runs its tendon runs with the tendon of the deep digital flexor for most of the course down to here that but then you see it's very interesting because this one has still some muscle within it then you see it's going to come and it's going to come back and join that of the superficial belly of the superficial digital flexor and so then it continues just as the tendon of the superficial digital flexor and the deep, deep digital flexor tendon continues just as the tendon of the deep digital flexor okay so the superficial is going to attach to the second phalanx and the deep digital flexor is going to continue all the way down to the flexor process on the third phalanx okay here we can see nicely the interosseous muscle you can see that there's actually muscle in it in the ruminant unlike in the horse okay and so that's the interosseous muscle it's going to have a tendon that's going to come over and attach to the abaxial surfaces of the proximal sesamoids and then it's going to have extensor branches that are going to come across and join the tendons of the medial and the lateral digital extensors from each side okay so very similar to the horse in that respect okay I think that's it there's one muscle that sometimes we find in goats and this one they ju he just had a little fibrous band right here this fibrous band right here under which went the median nerve and the brachial artery okay this is the remnant of what would be the pronator teres sometimes in these ruminants you do see a small muscle here the pronator teres okay so let's come back here to the vessels so we have our axillary artery coming it's going to give off a primary branch here which is going to be our subscapular artery okay just as in the dog it's going to have a branch that dives laterally which is going to be the caudal circumflex humoral artery that's the one that we see coming with the axillary nerve out here into the deltoideus it's going to give off this artery here that passes by our axillary lymph node that's going to be our thoracodorsal artery and then it continues up this way as the subscapular artery okay 
we come on down we're gonna see a small branch comes off here that dives under our corticobrachialis muscle okay so our corticobrachialis muscle unlike in the dog it's going to be a flexor of the shoulder in our large animals rather than an extensor like we saw in the dog but this artery here is our cranial circumflex humoral artery and that indicates when our axillary becomes our brachial artery okay we're gonna find a deep branch coming off here somewhere it's coming off right there there's our deep brachial artery it comes on down we're gonna have a collateral ulnar artery we'll also have one that crosses the cubit which would be our transverse cubital artery there we go there's our transverse cubital artery okay it comes on down it's continued as the brachial it goes underneath our pronator teres yeah these guys don't really pronate the pronator teres if it's present is going to actually help flex the elbow okay then we see this big branch here this guy branches kind of more than we usually see but we see this big branch here and a primary part of it here is going between the radius and ulna so that's going to be our common inner osseous artery at that point our main artery goes from brachial to median our median comes along here gives off a thin branch which unfortunately got broken you see it right here it then comes along here more medially along the carpus that's going to be our radial artery but this is our median artery coming on down so if we follow the circulation down to the digit we see that the median becomes the palmar common digital three and then down in here you can see that it's going to divide into two axial arteries a palmar axial digital three and a palmar axial digital four and those are going to be the main supply to the digits okay so this specimen here is actually of a hind limb but distal to the tarsus it looks just like a front limb so i'm going to talk about it just as if it is a front limb okay so this these tendons here would be from the the common digital extensor muscle we that have that medial branch that comes down and attaches to the dorsal surface of the second phalanx we have the lateral branch which splits and goes to the extensor process on both third phalanges okay and then we have the lateral digital extensor coming down and just like on the medial side it's going to come down attached to the dorsal surface of the second phalanx and has a little part that goes down to the distal phalanx okay we can also see on this specimen a very nice interdigital ligament here okay if we come back over here to the yes it's a plantar surface but we'll call it the palmar surface because we're pretending remember okay so we have here uh, interosseous muscle it's going to come down here and it's going to have attachments on the of each digit it's going to have remember there's two sesamoids and on the axial surface of the axial sesamoid and on the abaxial surface of the abaxial sesamoid it's going to have an attachment and then they're going to have extensor branches that are going to come around and attach to in this case the 
medial portion of the common digital extensor and on the other side the lateral digital extensor. We can see here the superficial and deep digital flexor tendons. There is going to be a flexor manicus just as there is in the dog. Here we have our palmar annular ligament here, our proximal digital annular ligament, our distal digital annular ligament, and then this portion here is part of that interdigital ligament. Okay, we also have a proximal interdigital ligament that we can't see real well. But you can see here that the superficial digital flexor is going to come down attached to the second phalanx and the deep digital flexor tendon is coming on down to attach to the flexor process on the third phalanx. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just review through these nerves the muscles they innervate and their actions. Okay? We'll start out here with the suprascapular nerve. Remember it's going to course between the subscapularis and the supraspinatus muscle. The suprascapular nerve comes around, innervates the supraspinatus muscle as well as the infraspinatus muscle which we find here. So this is going to be primarily an extensor. The infraspinatus is more of a stabilizer of the joint. It may do a little bit of abduction but not so much. Okay, It may flex or extend the joint depending on the position of the joint. Okay, Not, not a real important muscle. Then we have the subscapularis nerves going to the subscapular muscle. This muscle is going to be primarily an adductor, more of a stabilizer of the joint. Remember, the shoulder joint does not have collateral ligaments, so it needs stabilizers. Okay, here's the thoracodorsal nerve going to go to the latissimus dorsi, which will retract the limb. Okay, this nerve here that's diving between the subscapularis muscle and the teres major muscle here, this is going to be the axillary nerve. Axillary nerve innervates the teres major, the deltoideus, and this small little teres minor muscle right here, and those muscles are flexors of the shoulder. Okay. Remember, if somebody comes up to you and pokes you in the axilla, your reflex is going to be to flex your shoulder. Okay. Then we have the radial nerve here, diving between the long head and the medial head of the triceps brachii. So it's going to innervate triceps brachii as well as the tensor fascia antibrachii muscle. It's going to come round here. We found it over on this side as well, innervating the long and the lateral head. So the radial nerve does the extensors of the elbow. It's also going to come down here with a deep branch and do the extensors of the carpus and digit. So it does the extensor carpi radialis, the common digital extensor, and the lateral digital extensor. So the radial nerve allows you to extend your elbow, your carpus, and your digits. When you extend your elbow, carpus, and digits, your limb is now radiating from your body. So radial nerve, okay? It also does the ulnaris lateralis here, which in our domestic species is a flexor of the carpus. So he doesn't play fair, although in humans this muscle is actually the extensor carpi ulnaris, so it is an extensor developmentally. Okay, come back over here, that was radial, then we have the ulnar nerve, it's going to come and get these more caudal muscles of our antebrachium, 
which are flexors of the carpus and digit. And then our median, remember in our domestic large animal, the median runs with the musculocutaneous. Okay, so the median is going to come down here, also get the more medial of these caudal muscles of the anabrachium, which are also flexors of the carpus and the digit. Remember, if they don't have digit in the name, they're not going to have action on the digit. So, let's identify those guys. So we have this guy here is the flexor carpi ulnaris. We have the flexor carpi radialis. And we have our superficial digital flexor muscle. Remember it's got two heads here. So we have our two heads of our superficial digital flexor coming together down here. And then we have the rest of this is deep digital flexor. So then we have our musculocutaneous. We have the proximal muscular branch. Innervates cortical brachialis biceps brachii, courses with the median here, and then terminal branch comes off down here to go to the brachialis muscle. So basically, musculocutaneous goes to the flexors of the elbow. Yeah, this is a cortical brachialis is a flexor of the shoulder, but our main muscles here are flexors of the elbow. So we can remember that the musculocutaneous Let's weightlifters show the muscle under their skin by flexing their elbow. Okay? And that's our nerves and the muscles they innervate and those actions.